All right, everybody, welcome to the full print queue walkthrough video. At this point, I'm going to assume that you have downloaded the software onto your computer. You've clicked it. It's opened up a web browser and it is running on your desktop. If you haven't got that far or you're having trouble with that, either reach out to us in an email or check the video on the website for how to download and set up the software. In this video, I'm going to walk you through every different aspect of the software so that you can use it, understand it and maximize the efficiency of your print farm. When you get to the dashboard, this is what it should look like. You should be able to see the version of the software in the top left hand corner here. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see a couple of pages. We are going to start off on the printer page, and this is how we are going to add a printer to the software. When it comes to which brands of printers are working with the software right now, we are currently working with the Prusa Mark IV, Mark IV S and Core One. Uh, I believe the other models will work as well. I just haven't tested them. When it comes to Bamboo, I have tested the Bamboo A1 and I think the A1 Mini will work as well. And we're working on the other printers at the moment. You can check the website for the latest updates, uh, but you'll be able to find everything there. So first thing you need to do when you're adding a new printer is you need to choose the printer type, whether it's Prusa or it's Bamboo, whichever one uh, you choose doesn't matter. If we go with Prusa, you're going to need a printer name. For us, it is going to be 56. You need to know the IP address of that printer. For right now, it is going to end in 7.0 and the Prusa Link API, you need to get that from the computer. You can get that by going to Settings, Network, Prusa Link, or Prusa Connect, and you can find all of this information there. And then you need to assign this printer to a group. Once you have all of that information in there, you can click on Add Printer, and it's going to add, it is basically going to show you whether or not that printer has been added to your print farm. Here it says Added Successfully, and then it will take probably 30 seconds for the printer to actually connect and pull the status from the printer. But it should change from offline to the ready state or to the printing state, depending on what your printer is doing. While this is connecting here, we're going to go back to printers and I'm going to add my bamboo printer. Now you can add printers individually, just like we have just done. If you go to bamboo here, you'll see the printer name. That is a name that you come up with. The printer IP address is something that the printer will create for you. The device ID is the serial number of that printer and the access code is created for you when you put that printer into LAN mode and development mode. Your printer, your A1 printer needs to be in LAN mode and it needs to be in development mode. So it does need to have a fairly recent update on the firmware, something to keep in mind there. After you have that done, you need to go to the printer group and again, sign it to a group. You can click on add printer and it will add the individual printer there. The other option that you have here is you can go to our website and you can go to the downloads page here and you can download the bulk upload template. And what's this, what this is going to do is it's going to give you an Excel sheet that you can open on Windows or Google Sheets and it is going to allow you to fill in information for multiple printers. It's going to ask you the exact same information but it's going to do it in an Excel sheet and it's going to allow you to upload that Excel sheet. And so if I go bulk add printers, I don't think it's going to show you the pop-up window that just came up here, but I'm going to click on the attachment and now you can see that it has printer name number one, the IP address, the device ID, the access code, and the group numbers. If I click on add this printer, it's going to take a second here, but it goes added printer successfully. We go back to dashboard here and now you can see that we have two printers connected. Printer number one here as connected. So we are just going to change this to A1 so that we can see this is the bamboo printer and We've got a problem with number 56 here. So I'm going to delete that. We're going to re-add it just in case I did something wrong here. 56, 251, here is that. Oh, I think I did the, uh, the wrong IP address on the first one. It didn't end in 70, it added it. ended in 251. So I have added it back in here and there we go. So now uh, the printer is connected. It is in the ready status. Our bamboo printer is in the finished status and this is what it looks like here. And so now we have two different printers connected. You can see the labels right here and now we're ready to go. So if a printer doesn't connect after 20, 30, 40 seconds like that, it means you probably entered something wrong just like I did right there. So now we've got two printers connected here. Both the Bamboo and the Prusa printers can be added individually on the top side here or they can be added in bulk through that template that you can download on the website. So if you have 60 printers, I highly recommend taking out a laptop and filling out that sheet with all 60 of your printers and then just uploading it all at once. It'll be the most efficient way to do that.
Now the other page here is stats. I'm still working on this page. There's a lot of development going into this page and I don't think all of the stats are correct for both printers. So take everything you see here with a grain of salt, but eventually this is gonna be really, really good. The third page or the last kind of page here on the right is your license. This is going to determine how many printers you can connect. Everybody is gonna start with three free printers. After that, you can connect as many as you want, but it will cost a small monthly fee uh, for each additional printer. Uh, on the right hand side here, you see this moon and that is what is gonna put everything into dark mode. And then lastly, here's the dashboard. This is where everything is gonna happen. Everything that we just talked about was kind of the setup and getting your printers connected. Now this is the dashboard. This is where the real work is gonna happen. And this is where kind of everything comes together. And so we're just gonna start from the top and we're gonna go down to the bottom and we're gonna walk through every different aspect of this. At the top here, you can see print farm statistics. You can't click on anything here. This is just gonna give you an overview of what your farm looks like. We have one printer in the ready state. We have one printer in the finished state and we have two printers in total. This is just a quick view of your farm at a glance so that you can see, okay, my printers are connected. None of them are offline. They're ready and we're ready to start printing. That's what this section is designed for. The next section here is the new order section. This is where we are gonna create orders that get sent to the printers. And it's very, very simple. All you have to do is choose the file. Now for bamboo uh, printers, it needs to be a .gcode.3mf file. You get that by creating your product in Bamboo Studio and then exporting the plate sliced file. So instead of clicking print in the top right corner, you click export plate sliced file. It's gonna give you a .gcode.3mf file and that is what you upload to the software. If you are uh, using a Prusa printer in Prusa Slicer, you can use a G-code or a uh, binary G-code. Either one will work. For us, we are going to send a printer to, we'll send it to the, uh, to the Prusa printer. So I'm gonna upload a file, it's called the Prusa Vase with no purge line. We are going to send four units. So this is where you determine how many units that you actually wanna send. And then the group here, this is really important. If you have printers that are in different areas or are different brands or have different nozzle diameters or have different uh, settings on them, you probably wanna group them differently and you wanna group the ones that are identical all together. And so this is where you can kind of take control of your farm and group different printers together, or you can put them all in the same group so that you can control the entire farm all at once. It's totally up to you, whatever you prefer. At my farm, I have nine printers on a rack in a three by three grid, and I have eight racks. What I do is I put all of the printers on the top level of those racks in group one, and then group two, and then group three, three so that I can stagger them and so that I can kind of go back and forth in the farm uh, when I'm changing over prints. And so that is my strategy, but it's gonna depend on your setup and your farm. For right now, we are gonna send this order of the Prusa vase with no purge. We're gonna send four of them, and we are gonna send it to group one because both of our printers are in group one right now. And here's the option to enable ejection. This is the idea of pushing the part off when it's done and then restarting the print at the end of it. I'm gonna make a dedicated video for this next so that we can dive into it in detail. But for right now, we're gonna leave this unchecked. And so what's gonna happen is the software is gonna send the job to the print. We're gonna remove the print manually. We're gonna reset the printer to the ready state, either through the screen or through the software. And then the software is going to send a new job if there is another job in the queue. For instance, in our queue, there will be four uh, jobs that need to get sent to the printer. And so uh, we're gonna select group group number one here, and we are gonna click on send order. But before I do that, I just wanna make sure that the A1, the bamboo one, is not going to receive this. And so it's in the finished state right now, so it's not gonna receive a job. We can also change the group of the bamboo printer A1 so that it doesn't receive this job and it doesn't cause any issues for us because it's not in the right format for a bamboo printer. And so we're gonna move this to group two. It is gonna reset our new order here, so I'm just gonna re-upload this file here. We're gonna change this to four. We are going to select group one. You can see that now that I changed the bamboo printer to group two, we have both options here. For us, we're just gonna send it to group one. We're gonna leave enable injection unclicked, and then we're gonna click on send order. So that's gonna send four of that file, four jobs, uh, to the queue system that is going to distribute jobs to the printers when they become available. And so if I scroll down here, you can now see the active orders tab. 
and you can see the job name. So this is the file that I sent out. You can see the quantity on the left hand side, the zero is how many have been printed so far. And on the right hand side is how many need to be printed. And then you can see the group that this job is assigned to. So this job is only going to go to printers in group one. And then you can see the status of this job. It is pending because it has not completed the entire system and the ejection is disabled, meaning it is turned off because we did not click that box. On the right hand side here, you can move these orders up and down to change the priority of them and which job is going to get distributed first. The top one will always get distributed first. And you can also delete the job here. This will get rid of the job and it will basically eliminate it from the system. It will no longer distribute these four units. You can see here though, it has just started distributing our first unit. And as I scroll down here, printer number 56, which is our Prusa printer, is now starting to print the Prusa vase with no purge. So it's working absolutely flawlessly and things are going really well. Now, I strongly encourage you to share this software with the world and share it on social media and please spread the word and make videos about it. But I know a lot of people don't want to share the file names of exactly what they're printing because it kind of gives away their products in some cases. And so I built in a privacy mode here that is going to turn off the job name of whatever you are printing. So please consider making videos and sharing it online. And if you don't want to share the job name of what you are printing, you can just turn on privacy mode and you can hide it from the world, but still share it and help me out. I would really, really appreciate it. Okay, so now we've talked about how you create an order. We've talked about the active order section, which basically just stores all the orders that you create. And the software here is going to distribute these jobs to any available printers as they become available. That is the premise here. That is the idea behind new orders and active orders. Now, underneath that, we have a little bit of control. This, these are kind of just control buttons that we can use to manage and regulate and control the print farm. And so this top section here where it says reset printers by group. What happens in my farm sometimes is I have 70 printers and if I reset every single printer all at the same time and I reset them to ready and I have jobs in the queue, it means that the software is going to send 70 jobs to these printers all at the same time. And what that means is that 70 printers are all going to start up at the exact same time and I'm probably going to bro blow some breakers and some fuses, and I'm probably going to use too much electricity and it's not going to work out very well for me. And so what I've done here is I've allowed you to reset the printers to ready by their individual group. And so if my entire 70 uh, printer print farm finishes, what I'll do is I'll go clear all the parts and then I'll reset groups one and two, but I'll leave group three in that finished state until the groups one and two have started printing so that I don't draw a massive amount of power all at once and I can kind of spread it out over time. It also allows me to just start start specific groups if I don't want to start everything all at once. It, it's designed to basically just give you a little bit more control over your farm and over the groups of printers that you have set up. Now underneath that we have some more control buttons here. The uh, bulk actions here, the mark all finished as ready. So this is the button that I don't really use a whole lot, but if you only have five, 10, 20 printers, you might use this button a whole lot. It really just depends. But what's gonna happen is when a printer finishes the print, it's gonna go into the finished state, just like you can see with the Bamboo Labs A1 printer here. And then what you are gonna do is when you click mark group two as ready, it is going to change that printer to the ready state. I'm not gonna do it yet. It's going to change that printer to the ready state and it is going to allow that printer to take the next job in the queue and the software will automatically distribute it. Now the button next to that is the stop all printers button. This is basically the emergency shutdown, the hey something has gone wrong here. I got the wrong file in there. All the printers are jamming. I sent something out wrong. Whatever is going on, if you click this button, it is designed to stop all of the printers as quickly as possible. You're probably going to have to reset them to the home screen. You might have to reconnect them depending on what's going on. But this is basically your emergency shutdown. The delete all printers button is basically going to delete them from the dashboard. If they have a job running, that job has been sent to the printer and the printer has stored that job and the printer is running that job. So deleting the printers from the dashboard is not going to stop the printers. It's just going to get them disconnected from the software, but they're going to finish that job. So keep that in mind. The last one here is the reset locks button. 
If something uh, isn't working or the screen won't refresh for you or it just gives you like the spinning wheel and it feels like things aren't working, click the reset locks button and it may be able to fix the problem for you. Now underneath that here is the actual printer section. You can connect as many printers as you want to this. Uh, right now I have like 75 printers connected to it. I think it'll manage 100 to 150. You do need to make sure that you have a good Wi-Fi router though. That's probably gonna be the limiting factor in most scenarios. Uh, but this is where your printers are gonna show up. When you add more printers in here, they're just gonna basically keep adding here and the page is gonna keep extending. You can view them in this full view where you can basically kind of control everything or you can put them into compact view. It's gonna put them into smaller tiles so that you can see the entire farm, especially if you have a lot of printers. On the right hand side here, you can also sort your printers by the name, by their group and by their status. So that if you've got 40 different printers in here and you just wanna figure out which ones are offline, this is the easiest way to do it and it will really help you see and understand your farm. Now, where things get really exciting here is, let's say that you've got a couple of printers that are finished like our Bamboo Labs A1 printer right here. What we are gonna do is we are going to add a new uh, print here. It is going to be a new job. We're gonna add 10 of them just like this. We're gonna select the group to group two and we are going to send this order and it's not gonna to go to the printer right now because that printer is in the finished state. It has a, it thinks that it has a product on that print bed. So a human needs to go pull that print off of it. It needs to tell the printer that it is ready. It can either do that through the screen with the Prusas or for the bamboos. You need to come back here and we need to mark this printer as ready. The easiest way to do that is to click on the mark group two as ready and what it's gonna do is it's gonna change that printer. As you can see, it marked one printer in group two as ready. And now that A1 printer has picked up the next order in the queue. You can also see that we have sent one out of 10 jobs to group two. Uh, the status is pending, ejection is enabled. And well, it, uh, it's gonna take 10 seconds here. There we go. But uh, it is now starting to print. It is going through the process of warming up the printer, warming up the nozzle, and getting this ready to go. And so this is uh, a basic summary of the software and how everything works. I hope this was a massive help for you. And if you are interested in seeing how ejection works, I'm going to walk you through that in the next video. So make sure you stay tuned. Thanks so much.